Hey, I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Now, I'm so excited to play this game, guys. I am super hyped, mostly because I've heard nothing but good things about this game, but I never got to play it because I think it came out on 3DS or some game system that I didn't have and I couldn't play, but it finally came out on Steam, and I'm so excited to play it. I hope you guys enjoy this because I know I'm going to have a blast. If you guys are cool with that, you're down with that. Everybody get ready and buckle up because here we go. I'm really excited, guys, but if I have to read a lot, I am screwed. Maybe it's voice acted. I don't know. Don't look like it, though. <laughs> Damn it. Why me? Uh-oh. I gotta read a lot, guys. I can't get caught. Not like this. I've gotta find someone to pin this on. Someone like him. I'll make it look like he did it. <laughs> I'm going to have fun with this. <laughs> August 3rd, 9.47 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby, number two. Boy, am I nervous. Right? Damn, what's up, baby? Oh, hi, Chief. Woo, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you, and your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean, you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over! My life, everything, it's all over! Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Death! Despair! Oh! I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna die! It sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. <sighs> Nick? His name is Butts? This guy's name is Butts. Alright, Butts. Hey, hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty! Give me the death sentence! I ain't afraid to die! What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I... I'm finished. Finished! I can't live in a world without her. I can't! Who... Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Hmm, the person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say it was you. Okay, so his girlfriend died and they're trying to pin it on him. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. Is it? This kind of looks a little complicated. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts, my best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the butts. Oh my god, we going here already? It's not even two minutes in, we going here already? In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That, and I owe him one, which is why I took the case, to clear his name. And that's what I'm going to do! Yes, we are going to do it, guys. We are going to solve this case together. August 3rd, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number two. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, everybody, settle down, settle down! Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The, um, defense is ready, your honor. Ahem. Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? E yes, your honor. I'm, um, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. No, you think? For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Thank, uh, thank you, your honor. 
Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. Yeah. Oh, sight fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Definitely not Phoenix Wright. It could be Larry Butts. Yeah, it's gotta be Larry Stinkin' Butts. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct! Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Whew, I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's... wait... uh-oh. No. No way, I forgot! I'm drawing a total blank here! Phoenix! Are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Oh, the victim! Oh, of course I know the victim's name! I, um, just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press tab to check it at any time, okay? Okay, Mia, yeah, I'll check my tab anytime. Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? Okay, let me check the tab. The old tabby tabby do. Cindy's autopsy report. She died at... Uh, that doesn't even matter. What's her name? Her name was Cindy, right? That's it? Uh, profiles? There you go. Cindy Stone, age 22. The victim in this case. A model. She lived in an apartment by herself. Oh my god. I can already tell that I'm gonna love this game. I hope you guys are gonna love it too. Her name is Cindy Stone. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now, tell me. What was the cause of death? She died because she was... Poisoned, hit with a blunt object, or strangled. Okay, time to tab it up again. She died from loss of blood due to blunt trauma. Okay, blunt trauma. Hit with a blunt object, your honor. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct! You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, your honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then. First, a question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne? Yes, your honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what the object was? The murder weapon was this statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Statue added to the court record. A statue in the shape of the thinker. It's rather heavy. Right? Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use tab to check the court record frequently. Yes, you always tell me that. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant Mr. Butts to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. Okay, guys, you got to pay attention. We are all Phoenix Wright right now. We have to pay attention to every single little detail from the first witness, and we can't miss anything, okay? We got to make sure Mr. Butts is innocent because we know who did it. It was some random guy in a purple suit, so we got to make sure that he's innocent. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh. Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. This could be a really, really bad. Oh, look at that cocky smile. Ahem. Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy. We were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. Um, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me. Ever. What's it to you anyway? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. Ooh. She was riding on a different Pony Express. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies, all of it, lies. I don't believe a word of it. 
Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Passport added to the court record. Okay, the victim apparently arrived home from Paris on 7.30, the day before the murder. Hmm, indeed, she appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but didn't have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right? I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I... We didn't see what happens. Stop him from answering. Ooh, okay, so I get to choose the fate right now. I kind of want to wait, but he's dripping in sweat. Like, he is dripping in that sauce right now. I gotta stop him. I gotta put an objection to this. My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to the case. Ooh. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That cheen she-dog? <laughs> he called her a she-dog. He's keeping the family friendly, guys. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I meet her... Wait, what? I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. My bad, it kind of skipped the dialogue. Sorry, guys. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh, boy. This is so not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? <laughs> well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did and maybe I didn't. Uh-oh. He went. What do I do? Have him answer honestly. Stop him from answering. Have him answer honestly because we know that he didn't kill her. Maybe if he's just brutally honest, everybody in the jury is going to be like, oh, okay, I mean, he obviously didn't do it then. So we are going to have him answer honestly. I know. I'll send him a signal. Tell the truth. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was there. I went. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep your chatter to yourselves, people. Order! Well, Mr. Butts? Dude, chill. She wasn't home, man. So, like, I didn't see her. What? Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call the witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Oh god, this is not good. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, your honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawit to the stand. This guy! What? This guy's the killer! Mr. Sawit, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is that correct? Oh, oh yes. Newspapers, yes. Mr. Sawit, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Witness testimony. Okay, so we gotta focus, guys. We gotta pay attention with our two eyes. Some of you guys may have four, so pay attention. Let's do this. I was going door to door, selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. Okay, hold on real quick. 1 p.m., you say? Time of death, 4 to 5 p.m. 
cause of death, loss of trauma. Wait, I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. But she died at 4 to 5 p.m. So something ain't right here. Something ain't adding up. Hold on. Yeah, she got back from Paris. Okay. And then she died from blunt force trauma with the thinker statue around 4 to 5 p.m. How do we object? Can I object? The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawit used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Blackout record added to the court record. Okay, so this was electricity to Miss Stone's building was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. Okay, so that is consistent with what the Mr. Sawit guy said and around the time of her death. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes? Uh, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. <laughs> cross-examination, Your Honor? You're a freaking lawyer, man! How do you not know that? All right, right. This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you expose the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? The client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. It was the time. I told you guys, the time. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face! Um, okay. Open the court record with tab, then point out the contradictions in the testimony. Okay, you got it. Let me do it right now. Oh, okay, we're gonna do it right now? I'm kinda nervous. I'm kinda nervous. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. Okay. Do I do this already? Hold on, hold on. I gotta think, guys. So, the electricity was out from noon to 6. And then he said he made a phone call around 1. But it was 4 to 5 p.m. So, we gotta pin him on that. Okay. So, right now, this is fine. Right now, this is fine. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Okay, that's good too. Thinking it's strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. Okay, so tab that. And then do we present the evidence right here? Present. Objection! Objection! You found the body at 1 p.m., you're sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at sometime after 4 p.m. Let's go! There was nobody to, uh, nobody to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? Oh, that? Oh, uh... Objection! Let's go, baby! This is trivial! The witness merely forgot the time! After his testimony, I find that hard to believe! Mr. Sawit, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, uh... Well, I... Gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. High five, guys! Double high five! That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. Let's go!
I'm happy about that. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? He's gonna do it again. He's gonna give me more lies. All right, what you got, liar? He reminds me of the guy who sells you a mask in uh, Zelda. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? Wait, 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 wait. He said it's from the television, but there was a blackout! There was a freaking blackout. How are you gonna watch TV if there's a blackout? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a tape program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. No, 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 no. Cross-examination that ass. Cross-examine that purple ass! Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a tape program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. All right, here we go. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. Oh, yeah, we already know what to do. This is easy mode. Come on, now. This is easy mode, baby. All right. Let's see the TV part of his testimony. Coming from the television. Okay, so tab that. And here is the blackout record. And objection! objection! Let's go! Hold it right there! The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. Ah! I... well... Ugh. The defense has a point! Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sawit? No, I, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Ah! Wait, I remember now. Mr. Sawit? The court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That, and you seem rather distraught. My apologies, Your Honor. It, uh, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sawit. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. This guy, man, lies on lies on lies. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. No, because the lady got hit with the thinker. You saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. Why is this judge a dumbass? Like, why are you such a freaking dumbass, bro? The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Like, the judge believes anything! He should be called Mr. Gullible! What is this? Okay, here we go, guys. Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. So let's tab this, give him the thinker, and say it with me, guys. Objection! Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was this statue. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? What? You, with your objections and your evidence, just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sowit. Hey, I... I saw it in there, okay? That's a clock! Your Honor, if I may... Yes, Mr. Payne? As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with his testimony now? What? Is it really? That's a clock? Bro, that's news to me. Hold on. Um, I'm gonna say yeah. Because I have problems with it. Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Let's go. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he went into the apartment, knew the victim. He went inside. You're lying! You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder! Oh yeah? Prove it! Prove I went in there! 
I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. Woohoo! Phoenix! I love this guy! You struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Yeah. Chat it up, guys. Chat it up. Order in the cart! Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sawit, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Oh, what's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face! Uh, uh. Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I... I... That... That day I... I never... Look, I... The clock I... I heard... No, I mean I saw... Ah! What? He had a wig the whole time? Objection! Shut up! I hate you! It was him, I tell you. I saw him. He killed her! And he should burn! Burn! Give him death! Order! Order in the court, everybody! Order! Order in the court, I say! <laughs> Your Honor, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright! Your Honor, you claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I'd better think it through carefully. Your Honor, the sound Mr. Sawit heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply examine the clock's batteries, ask the neighbors, try sounding the clock. You don't need to ask the neighbors. Try sounding it. Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 8.25. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. Yay! Yeah. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sawit heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sawit... Try to talk your way out of this one! Huh? Ah, you forgot one thing! Uh-oh. What's he talking about now? While it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. He's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it! I was so close! Mr. Wright! It seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately... What? This ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sawit. I come all the way down here to testify, and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal! A criminal! You lawyers are all slime! Grr. I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Oh, did I fail? Not so fast, Mr. Sawit. Mia? I mean, Chief. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think! But Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and... Think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. I know why. I know why, guys. Right, right? Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Yes. Because she was in Paris. Wait! Maybe I can prove it! You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. 
Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There is a piece of evidence in the court records that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha! Tough words! Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. Because she was in Paris. Bam! The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. on the next day there. The clock wasn't 3 hours slow, it was 9 hours FAST! The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sawit? Or should I say, Mr. Did It? No. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> I love this game. Uh, order. Order, I say. Guys, that was mighty fun work right there. Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness. He, uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, your honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, your honor? I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly. And find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, your honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but... This court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts. Not guilty. Woo! Hey! hey and the confetti job. Congratulations, Mr. Butts. And with that, this court is adjourned. That was dope. That was so freaking fun. Oh my god. It turns out that Frank Sawit was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day. When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sawit let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sawit grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Whew, I still can't believe we won. Right, good job in there. Congratulations. Thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over. Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Aw, oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait, no, I mean, bad, 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 bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But, but my Cindy Wendy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was a... Nah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts, innocent. <laughs> um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner? Movie? My treat. Oh, no, I, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh, hey. Here, take this. It's a present. Why do I want to have the murder weapon as a present? There's probably still Cindy's blood on there. A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Really? You? You made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And, and, and she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that make you just want to cry? <laughs> Larry. Are you so sure? 
Excuse me? I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Huh? Oh, yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? I have no freaking clue. Attorney's badge? No one would believe I was a defense attorney if I didn't carry this? What the heck are you talking about? I have no idea what the hell you were talking about. Passport? Take that! <laughs> Take that! Here you go, Larry. Proof. Uh, hehe. <laughs> it's okay, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll forget about her soon enough. Look, I'm gonna head home. Thanks a ton, eh? Guess that wasn't the right thing to show him. I don't know what I was supposed to show. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me? We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah! Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Uh, yeah, part at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? Bro, she is trying to get some action. Give it to her. And so my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us, unless you count the clock he gave Mia. I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. Ooh, that's interesting. The end. Okay, guys, that was the end of our very first trial. There's another episode called Turnabout Sisters. There's a lot more to this game if you guys actually want to see it. I had a lot of fun with that. I had a lot of fun just doing the voices, just like cross-examining the people. I just had a lot of fun doing that. So if you guys want to see another episode of this, make sure you guys give this video one big fat like. And tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is that dude!